my beautiful people, my friends, my fans, my family. You're welcome to another edition of Live Reading with the Author. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you'll be watching from. I just want to welcome you once again to our weekend live reading with the author, where we'll be reading from my life-changing book, Purpose Beyond My Scars. We've been doing this now for uh, four weeks. And we've been getting awesome responses. We've been getting uh, awesome reactions. Before we go on to today, last week we stopped at uh, chapter three. Before we go on to today's program, I just want to say thank you very much to all of you, my friends, my fans, my family, you have been wonderful to me. I call you family. Why do I call you family? Because you've been awesome to me for your support. Many of you have contributed immensely to the success of this book. Many of you have given ideas. Many of you have put in your effort, your money, your sweat, your energy to make sure that this book came out a success. And by the grace of God, it's been a good journey so far. I want to say, I can't mention all your names because you are so many. But I just want to say thank you to some people who I'm not saying that they are better than all of you, but I want to take just a small portion to say thank you to them especially. I'll come to that, but before I go to them, I want to say to you, my fans, my viewers, my readers, I want to say thank you. We thought, there was this question in the beginning when we started this live reading whether it is advisable to read this book because it may make people just listen online and not order but still you many of you went out of your way to order the book on amazon many of you went out of your way to support me many of you ordered this book to support me and I appreciate you for that. Many of you shared this video. And through your sharing, people got in contact with me. Not just to buy the book, but to give me words of encouragement. The purpose for which I wrote this book is to inspire people, is to motivate people, to encourage people that in spite of what you may be going through, in spite of what you may have gone through, in spite of the scars in your life, that you were created with a purpose that you must fulfill in spite of your scar. Like I always say, my scar is on my face, but where is yours? There are many who have them where we cannot see them. And that's the purpose for which I wrote this book, to inspire people, to encourage you, that if I can still stand here, you can. I want to appreciate you for sharing the videos. I want to appreciate you for buying the book. Some of you bought and even bought for your friends. Some of you didn't just buy for yourself, you, you bought for your friends. Some of you didn't buy, but you send me words of encouragement. I want to thank you and I want to appreciate you for that. 
those people that i said i wanted to take some time i know i'm going to forget some people because you are so many but let me just do this i want to say thank you because recently because of what people have been saying because of what people have told us of how this book has inspired them we decided to make this book available to the youth to young people in nigeria and because they cannot pay for it and because i cannot carry it alone i reached out to you to help me take 100 books to the youth to some youth in nigeria at least let's begin with 100 copies and many of you supported me on that mission we have not reached our target but we're getting there Ogwe Alubakalo, I want to say thank you very much for your support. Mr. Sonny Oji, I want to say thank you. Brussels Runway Deliveries, I want to say thank you. Integrated Crops and Staples, I want to say thank you. Pharmacies, I want to say thank you. Engineer Mecca Ogu, I, I want to say Mogu. Engineer Mecca Mogu, I want to say thank you. Steve from Rakai, I want to say thank you. Thank you for making it possible for this book to get to those youths freely. They didn't have to pay for it because you did. I want to appreciate you, Reverend Opathans. I want to appreciate you, Reverend Blessing. Thank you for your support. I want to appreciate you, Apostle Diana. Thank you so much. I want to appreciate all of you because you've been there, because you've helped me to carry a dream that seemed too big for a small person like me. I want to appreciate you. Thank you so much for standing by me, for being there for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we go along, I may mention other names, but for now, I'm going to leave it at this. And every week, I'll be mentioning more names. Thank you so much. We received videos from the students but the background noise was so much that the names they were mentioning and what they were saying was not very audible so we decided not to use those videos new videos are being made and as soon as that those are available we will make them available to you as well but before then i want to publicly say thank you so much if you come on board help share the video help help share the video i'm going to share a little bit i'm going to invite some people while you share the video i'm going to invite uh some people online Hello. Sorry, can I call you back? I'm on live video. Okay, I think. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so let's share the video, share the video, share the video. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Share, share. Sorry, can I call you back? I'm on my video. Okay, I think. Please share, 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 share. I'm sorry about that. Share, 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 share. <clears throat> so we're going to start with today's reading. Last week we stopped. We 
we finished chapter three last week we, we finished chapter three last week and chapter three was welcome to the family where we talked about the situation the struggles the doctor's visits and finally getting pregnant i want to thank you those of you online right now i can see through my phone i see evangelist lillian i want to thank you sorry 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 those of you online right now okay voila so it's out so the i see ambrose agu all the way from greece please as you join kindly type for me where you are watching from lillian charis god bless you bonietta god bless you all the way from the united states thank you so much sir i appreciate you for joining me i appreciate you for watching thank you thank you thank you give us thumbs up thank you continue to uh share the video so we are starting today with chapter four of my life-changing book i want to thank facebook as well many people say they are not on facebook because facebook is a bad place to be it exposes you to evil it exposes you to a lot of things but facebook has done nothing but good to me if not for facebook i will not be connected to beautiful people like you if not for facebook i will not be connected to wonderful people like you who have made it possible those like i said in the beginning who have bought the book i thank you those who haven't bought the book i also thank you for helping me share this video for helping me even your shares even your like even just even though you don't write anything just that thumbs up that you give is a big encouragement to me so i appreciate you thank you so much thank you for joining me <clears throat> so we are starting from chapter four today chapter four is titled my storm double tragedy shortly we attempted to have a little brother or sister for little Ezra. This time, it was no longer that desperate desire we had in the beginning. We had a daughter and wanted her to have a brother or sister. But we had our lives as well and we were ready to live and enjoy it. We went on regular holidays to Africa and Europe. Life was going well. But after almost two years and no pregnancy, I started getting worried again. I had given birth to a baby already. Getting pregnant again shouldn't be so hard, right? So what was keeping me from pre getting pregnant again? People began to talk again. When are you going to have a second child? Do you want a boy or a girl? my husband was not worried at all each time i expressed my concerns he dismissed it as worrying too much we already have a child he chided me just enjoy her honey i know david i can't help myself he clasped my hands in his stared into my eyes Worrying would not bring another child. I bit my lips and looked away. He raised my chin with a finger. It would happen if you stopped worrying. I knew he was right, but I didn't want to hear it, especially the constant comments and questions from people. A few months after Ezra's third birthday, I became pregnant again. We were ecstatic. An ultrasound at six weeks revealed I was pregnant with a set of twins. We were over the moon. The thought that we were about to have our own dreams doubly come true was mind blowing. In my excitement, I shared the news with a very close family member. Her reception was cold. It seemed strange, but I was too happy to pay attention. 
my pregnancy continued to blossom. I glowed. Everything was great. My daughter, now in nursery, in nursery school, was very excited about being a big sister. We discussed everything with her. You see why you have to eat more, Ezra? She nodded wide-eyed. So you could have enough strength to take care of your soon coming siblings, I concluded. My daughter wasn't a fan of food. Now she began to eat everything in good measures. She needed to be strong in order to be a big sister. I loved being pregnant with the twins. My husband wouldn't stop telling me, I told you, you were worrying over nothing. Just two months far gone, David dived head on into arrangements for the room. He painted the wall neutral, considering we didn't know the sex of the babies. We bought everything in double. To put it mildly, we were all ready to welcome the twins into our family. I had a craving for a snack one night. David offered to get it for me, but I wasn't sure what I wanted. I went to the kitchen myself instead to see what I could find. I didn't feel any pain or cramps. I climbed back up the stairs with the snack. I felt warm liquid trickle down my thighs. I glanced down and the will to leave instantly left my body at the sight of so much blood. Dear God, David, I ran to the bathroom, thrusting the door wide open. Two steps echoed down the hall and my husband appeared in no time. Oh no, he muttered, shoving a fist in his mouth. I am so sorry, honey, I cried, reaching out a hand to him and wailing from the depths of my soul. It's going to be okay, he said, securing me in a tight embrace. This can't be okay. I melted in his strength, but his words meant nothing to me in that moment. I can't recall how I managed to make it to the car. David drove like the ghost of hell, was chasing him. And we were in Genk Hospital in no time. Confusion numbed my senses. My fingers felt cold. I raised my palms to my cheeks. The pregnancy had been going so well. What happened? At the hospital, the night duty nurse <clears throat> told me my bleeding was not enough emergency to wake up the doctor on call. You're neither due for delivery nor in labor, she insisted. We left Genk and drove to Hasselt. My gynecologist was waiting for me when we arrived. He carried out an ultrasound. The babies were okay, but again, surrounded by blood. History was repeating itself, he announced in a solemn voice. The room zoomed in on me. This was the same experience I had with my first pregnancy. My ears pounded, I was choking. I felt dehydrated and in need of air. He prescribed the same treatments and bed rest. I obeyed all doctor's orders and life took shape again, except for the occasional starting, the babies were growing. My husband and I selected name options for the twin. Two boys or two girls. We bought a bigger car. David suggested it would be a great idea to invite my mother to be with us for the birth of the babies. So many things planned. We were gradually working out our plans, one after the other, when tragedy struck. 
Friday, the 14th of July, 2006, was like any other day. My husband had left very early for work, leaving my daughter and I behind at home. I thought to stay longer in bed and drew the bedroom blinds tightly to prevent the hot summer heat from penetrating. A tiredness had slowly crept on me the last couple of days, but I didn't give it a thought. I attributed it to the growth of the babies and the very warm weather. At about 10 a.m., my sister called. The usual chatty boisterous pleasantries. Then we lost ourselves in the flow of gist. Time flew. Now hungry, I thought it better to get to the kitchen and grab a bit of something to eat. Halfway down the stairs, the phone snuggled between my ear and shoulder. I felt the urge to urinate. A few more steps down the stairs, I hopped over to the toilet. I wasn't making any effort to urinate. Lots of what I thought was urine flowed endlessly as if I had held it in for too long. So strange. I waited a bit and then stood up and something dropped from my body. What is something is wrong, sis? I gushed to my sister in a wobbly voice. I hung up the phone and dialed my husband's number. He walked about five minutes from our home and was home almost immediately and took me to the hospital. I didn't know what to think. There was no pain. I hoped and prayed. But when I got to the emergency room, my worst nightmares became reality. One of the twins' water had broken at five months pregnancy. I was immediately admitted for observation. What? I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I didn't do any heavy lifting. How did my water break? I cried and I prayed like never before. Many hours passed without any change. I remained hopeful that all would end in favor of me and my babies. My husband and daughter stayed with me until about 8.30 before they went home. I tried but couldn't sleep. I kept frequenting the toilet. I could feel something was wrong, yet I still had faith in God and hoped for a happy ending. At about 5 a.m. in the morning, I went into labor. I can already feel the baby's head, one of the nurses informed me by 10 a.m. My heart sank. What kind of miracle will push the baby back into the womb? Why would God do this to me? Clutching my Bible, David and I cried and prayed. I called everyone I could to join me and pray, but nothing happened. At exactly 12.30 p.m. on the 15th of July, 2006, my baby was born. A beautiful baby girl. She was not stillborn, but died shortly of her underdeveloped lungs. Davide held me while I held her in my arms. I hoped to wake up from this nightmare. Two nurses and Dr. Usanto Ajok surrounded me as they thought I would explode any moment. I would wake up from this horrible dream and my pregnancy would still be intact. I couldn't believe this was actually happening. It felt like a dream, only it wasn't. I went numb with pain. My whole body trembled. Fear gripped me so tight that I could hardly breathe. I had a short moment to say goodbye to my daughter. 
Jade Ifechuku Dezanin before she took her last breath. <clears throat> Goodbye, my angel. Mommy loves you. I wish that. Come back if you can. When the nurse came to take her away, I didn't want to give her up. She's my baby, my second child. Only her mama should take care of her, not the nurse, I cried. But I couldn't keep her. Finally, they took her away from me. I'm going to induce you to have the other baby, my doctor announced solemnly. No, I said stoically and shook my head. There is no chance of survival. How do you know that? He sighed. I consulted with the doctors from the teaching hospital in Leuven. They confirmed the baby would not survive. I am sorry. I refuse to be induced. Why would I help them force my remaining baby out? The babies had two separate amniotic sacs. The water of one baby had broken. The other sack was still intact and I could feel my baby kicking. I was overwhelmed by grief of losing Jade, yet hopeful that my remaining baby will stay with me. Exertion took over me. I must have dozed off briefly because I opened my eyes to see a nurse trying to add something to the infusion in my hand. Oh my God, she was inducing me. Don't you dare, I yelled at her and pulled out everything from my hand. My husband tried to calm me down, but I was still yelling at the nurse. I was only trying to give you something to strengthen you, she claimed. Strengthen who? I didn't need anything from her. That's a big lie. I saw you. I could not believe they were about to murder my baby. What do what you think you saw, ma'am? She lifted the infusion. Nothing but energizer. You have not had anything to eat the whole day. I didn't need food. I needed some assurance that my baby would survive. I kept praying to God to save my baby. Hours passed. Night came. No contractions. My hope rose again. The next morning, I felt tiny stings like the beginning of a menstrual pain. I tried to ignore but it persisted. I could still feel my baby kick vigorously. The ultrasound showed it wasn't coming down at all. The babies were arranged on top of each other. The one below had been done. Her exit created a space under the remaining baby. My doctor was worried about the situation. I know you feel a need to protect your child. So this may sound cruel and heartless, but you're risking your life by letting the other baby remain in you. My baby will make it, doctor. I know it. There's no hope of survival, he repeated. I refuse to listen to him. He didn't know the God I believed in, the God for whom nothing was impossible. My faith remained strong, even though my heart was on fire. The fact that the baby had not descended into the space created by the delivered baby meant to me he was certain to stay. I had heard that babies in the womb could hear. As irrational as it seemed, I spoke to my baby to fight, to stay with me. I talked to God and my baby. I refused to eat drink or move for fear that my baby would be pushed out. I was convinced that as long as the baby refused to descend, nothing would happen. I prayed that God would use this miracle to convince the doctors and nurses of the God I was talking about. A popular nursery rhyme says, if wishes were horses, beggars will ride. They start my prayers and my wishes. As the day progressed, my baby slowly began to move down the uterus. 
my doctor encouraged me to push but i refused i didn't want to partake in helping them push my baby out then the pain gradually became unbearable i still refused to push even though the doctors warned me severally that my refusal endangered my own life as the contractions became shorter and the pain increased i felt drowsy i wanted to close my eyes and sleep i didn't want to push i didn't have the strength to too loud the baby so i can sleep i felt labor pains burn in me but from far away at first i didn't want the pain because it meant my baby will come out but now i wanted the pain to stop so i could do what i desperately needed to do sleep david stood beside me holding my hands his eyes were blood red. I saw my sister standing somewhere in the room, totally white with pain. But I was no longer afraid. I wanted sleep. Please pull the baby out. I want to sleep, I pleaded with the doctors. But he wouldn't let me. He squeezed my fingers, slapped my hand, and kept hurting me in any way he could to stop me from falling asleep. I didn't understand why they were being so cruel to me. I just wanted sleep. My fingers were still sore two weeks after the incident. My doctor later explained that I was not actually falling asleep, but sleeping into death. If he had allowed me to sleep, I might probably not have woken up again. After much struggle, at 1.30 a.m., on the 16th of July, 13 hours after the birth of his sister, Jade, my son, Jason Uchechuku, was born. He was a tiny, handsome little boy. He too was not still born, and he died shortly after in my arms. <clears throat> I was devastated. My heart shattered into many little pieces as I held him. He looked so tiny. I felt so sorry for him because I knew how much he had fought to remain in my womb. I couldn't help or protect him. I was angry with my body for failing to protect my babies. It was my duty as their mother to protect them. I was angry with God for taking the gifts he had given me. God does not take back his gifts. I asked him, what exactly was my sin that I had to give? I asked him, what exactly was my sin that I had to bury two babies in one day? I got no answer. I couldn't believe what happened. I didn't drink or take drugs. Where did this come from? Dr. Ajok sat beside me, still squeezing my hand, but now gentler than when I was in labor. What did I do wrong? to force my babies out. I needed to hear a confirmation of my guilt. I couldn't get over the fact that somehow I was responsible for what happened to my babies. You didn't do anything wrong. You did everything right, he tried to convince me. Sometimes certain things just happen that are just beyond human. Why did they come out, doctor? Why not stay in longer so I could protect them? Nature must have willed it so. They could have fought 
at least, to stay for me. The babies had no chance of survival. Their lungs were too small. They were not fully formed. They couldn't breathe on their own outside the womb. The doctor looked up and saw my husband. Make sure she doesn't fall asleep, he instructed Abdi. The nurses left, him, left with him to give us enough time to say goodbye to our baby before they took him away from me too. It was like an out-of-body experience. I wanted to but couldn't cry. I was discharged from the hospital the next day, still numb and unable to cry. Outside the hospital, David asked me to sit on an iron bench and wait while he got the car from the parking lot. As I sat there with my sister, I remembered, I remembered having sat on this same bench and waited for him to get the car the day we took our first daughter home from this hospital. Only this time I was walking out empty handed. Hot tears rolled down my cheeks as I realized what had just happened. Double tragedy. I lost two babies in one day. That was the end of chapter four, Double Tragedy. End of chapter four, My Double Tragedy. I still want to say thank you for allowing me into your living room, for allowing me to share my story with you. This is a very emotional chapter. Even when I was writing it, like you heard in the beginning of the book, at the beginning of the book, I have always kept a diary. And I had to go through my diary to get accurate information to, so that I'll be able to tell my story how it was at the time you know after a long time the exact way when you write your when you you're used to writing keeping the diary you write exactly how you feel at the moment but after some years you will remember the story but the emotion may no longer be the same when i was writing this book a lot of times I had to consult my diary to see, to remember exactly how things happened. And when I was reading this incident, it was very heavy for me, just as it is today, to read through what I went through. But I am glad that I am able to share it with you. I don't wish what happened to me on anybody. The reason I am glad and the reason I thank you for allowing me into your living room, for sharing this weekend with me as I read this book, as I share my story, is that your struggles may not be what I experienced, may not be I lost two babies in one day a boy and a girl in one day remember my story i am that woman who struggled who went from doctor to doctor to get pregnant and then i got pregnant and this happens 
Imagine the devastation. I don't wish it on anybody. But your struggles at this moment may not be what I went through. It may be something smaller. It may be going through relationship problems. It may be a divorce. It may be an illness. It may be loss of a job. It may be loss of anything. But I want to let you know, this happened in 2006. If everything went well, this year, they would have been, how old? 14 years. It gets better. I never thought that I would rise above this. Do you forget? No. But it will get better. You will live again. You will enjoy life again. Does the pain go away? No. As I read that this chapter today, as I read through these pages today, it's like relieving it again. But I am sure I'm not going to stay in a moody condition today. You know why? I have not forgotten my twins. I've not deleted them because I have other children now. Or I had another child after that. I have not deleted them because they are not here. No. I have learned to live with what happened. Why am I grateful to you for allowing me into your home? That you can look at my story and say, if she is still alive, if she is still sitting there, if she is still there forging ahead, remember the title of this book, Purpose Beyond My Scars. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, when he read my book, he sent me an email and he wanted to um, host me on his platform. He said, when I read your book, when I saw your book and I saw your picture, I saw your face, I thought you were talking about your face. He said, but when I read your book, I realized that your face was just one of the many scars. My sister, my brother, what are you going through today? I want to thank you for allowing me into your home. But I also want you to thank God that you allowed me into your home to be a source of encouragement to you that in spite of what you are going through, that in spite of what you have gone through, I am standing here. I am still here telling you that it's going to be okay. It didn't happen in one day. It took time. I'm still healing. It's been 14 years. I am still healing. Because if I was completely healed today, when reading through them, I wouldn't have felt the way I felt. I am still healing. But I am now in a place where I can use my pain and I can draw strength from my pain and tell you never to give up. If you have any questions for me, anything you want to ask, feel free, just send me an inbox on Facebook or send your question to plus three two four seven three five two sixty forty eight. If you're calling from Belgium, it's zero four seven three 
0242-526048. If you are calling from outside Belgium, it's plus 32473526048. Sorry. And then there is another number, plus 32465474. 303. Send me um, your message on WhatsApp. Send me your message through Messenger or text. Text it to me. I'm going to. I can't see. Sorry that I'm not mentioning your name because I'm using uh, this app on my laptop. I can't see your comments. I can't see who is online. I'm going to check my phone now. So just give me a second to look through and say hello to you those of you online with me aha scarlet a do crystal a holiness i appreciate you joseph imoke god bless you thank you very much amru sago from greece thank you lillian charis thank you belgium queen amina from canada god bless you stella imade belgium god bless you divinity divine god bless you osas ihongwe god bless you Scarlett Edu from the UK. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate all of you for joining me today. So I have uh, some questions that I want to share. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, ma. God bless you. I saw your your program about three weeks ago, and that led me to order the the Kindle version of this book. I have to tell you that I was very much inspired by it. I'm sorry, I have to scroll. I was very much inspired by it. I cried, I laughed. I felt all kinds of emotions. I really appreciate you for what you have done for bringing this book out. I have not experienced so many things like this in my life, but I have also dealt with a lot of loss. My mom died three years ago of cancer, of ovarian cancer. And I've been trying to deal with her death. And I don't know how to come out of it. I cannot believe that you lost two babies in one day and still have the courage to go on. My mother died of ovarian cancer at the age of 62. I am a grown woman. My mother has lived her life, but still I don't know how to deal with her loss. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to have a burnout and sometimes I feel depressed. Ma, how did you get through the loss of your babies? Hmm. Well, well, well. Hmm. Ronnie Cruz, God bless you. Pastor Nosaira, God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. So I'm going to answer your question. What's your name? Your name, your name okay beauty yes um how did i get through first of all i want to send my condolences to you for the loss of your mother i don't know i'm not sure if you are watching right now but i think you will watch it because i don't see you online yeah first of all i want to say sorry for the loss of your mother now you said something that you are a grown woman and your mother had lived her life and um, that your pain 
wasn't as big as mine. Well, I do not in any way trivialize, I cannot trivialize your own pain. I cannot minimize your pain because your mother had lived her life because you're a grown woman. Pain is pain. It doesn't matter when it happens. It doesn't matter who it happens to. It doesn't matter what happens. The loss of a loved one is always painful. I was um, 42 years old when my mother died. That was eight years ago. I'm 50 years now. And uh, at 42, when my mom died, it was also painful. She was... Uh, let me not say old, but she had lived her life. She had many grandchildren and even great grandchildren, great grandchildren. But it still doesn't minimize the pain because the, your mother has lived her life because you are a grown woman. The loss of a person is the loss of a person. Yes, I lost two babies in one day. How did I get through it? Now I sit here and it looks like, oh, it's nothing. No. And a lot, of, a lot of people ask the question, but you didn't live with them. But we had plans. And it didn't work out. And I had to give them up in one day. And you asked how I dealt with that. How did I deal with them? At first, I didn't want to deal with it. If you listened in the book, I didn't feel any pain. I didn't feel anything. I was numb. I didn't have any pain, nothing. The first week that I came home, I didn't feel anything, I didn't feel pain. I was just there. And now looking at it, when I listen to people who say they are in depression, they are uh, they have they have issues, emotional issues. I think that being out of your body, I don't know what you could call that. If if not, I mean depression, because I wasn't feeling anything. But the week after, the pain came. The pain came and I didn't know if I was going to come out of it or not. I didn't think I was going to come out of it. I didn't have any plans that this is how I'm going to come out of it. Did I really want to come out of it? But as we go ahead next week in chapter five, I'll say it today, but it's actually in chapter five. How did I come out of it? Through the help of my family, my daughter, my husband, and my mother. My four-year-old daughter saved my life. How did she do that? The first few days, like I said, the first week, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel any pain. I was just home. The day I came back from the hospital, I was normal. I felt normal. I wasn't rejoicing. I knew something had happened to me, but I was just there like a piece of table or chair or a flower. Nothing. No, 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 no pain. No, no anger. No, nothing. But the week after, the pain came down on me. And they almost crippled me. I cried to the point that I lost my voice. And it took me two years, two years to regain my, to speak like I'm speaking now. It took me two years to regain my voice. My voice was like, you know, when you have heavy cough, when you have had a heavy cough or when you lose your voice or when you have shouted too much and you lose your voice. It usually takes days and then it goes away. But my own took two years. I, I was not speaking no more. It became part of me. 
But in the weeks, as the weeks went by, I I I began to see my daughter. Began to, you know, one day something happened one day, the very first day that that girl actually took me out of the grave. I didn't plan to do anything. I was just home. My my husband at the time would take her to the crash. And that very day, my husband went to take her from the crash. And as she came in, she rushed in and almost knocked me down because I wasn't eating. I was so frail. I was so fragile. She almost knocked me down. But a four-year-old doesn't understand. She knew something happened, but a four-year-old doesn't understand the pain that you are feeling as an adult. And then she was telling me the stories and, and everything she did in the crash that day. And I just suddenly realized, I have a reason to live. I just realized, okay, I'm dying. If if anything happens to me, what will happen to this girl? The love and support that I had from my family, which is the main reason why I started Vocals for Christ. As we go along in the book, I kind of digressed a little bit. So my sister, the question you asked, how did I get over the loss of my two of my two babies i got over the, the, the pain through the support of my family through the support of my family realizing that i have a reason to leave your mom is gone you can't get her back. But I want you to ask yourself a question. If you had a moment to wake your mother up right now, and she had just enough time to talk to you before going back again, what do you think she would tell you? You think she will ask you to continue to mourn for the rest of your life? You think she will want you to die? I don't think so. I loved my children. I was ready. We were ready. My senior daughter, my husband, we were ready to welcome them. But it wasn't meant to be. It didn't come. I lost them the same day I gave birth. They didn't die inside of me. I didn't have a miscarriage. People say miscarriage. I didn't have a miscarriage because they didn't come out as blood. They came out as real children, alive, but just for some minutes. And I had to give them up. It took time. It didn't happen in one week. It took time for me to begin to heal. It's 14 years now. I am still healing. Time heals the wound, sister. Will you ever, ever, ever forget the pain? You know, get rid of it that you will talk about your mom and no longer feel pain. Maybe not, but they go less and less. Those days when I talked about the twins, maybe I'll cry and be depressed. Now, I feel free to talk about them, to use them, as encouragement to somebody without becoming moody or without becoming stressed, uh, how do we say, it? depressed. It took me time. It took time. In the beginning, it took a lot of encouragement from my family. I don't know what kind of family you have. And I'm sure the pain is the same for the whole of your family, but you have, at least you have some people who are close to you. And then put your, now it's easy for me today to say, put your trust in God. 
But at the time, it took me some time before I actually began to reach out back to God to say, I can't do this alone. Help me. I need your help. I need your strength. What am I saying? I got through this mainly because of the support system that I have. I, I can never underestimate the support system. God helped me and the support system that I had, my daughter, my husband, and my mother, if not for them, I guarantee you I will not be here today. And like I said, that's the reason I started Vogels for Christ. To be that your family member that says, don't give up. I've had the opportunity of going to different places to minister. And people come up to me to say, your story has inspired me. Look at what I'm going through. People see me. They see my scar. But you see some people, they are looking all well packaged. But deep inside, their heart, their soul, they are bleeding. And having heard so many stories, I decided to start Vocals for Christ. And I decided to write this book to share with you that no matter what you may have gone through, no matter what you may go through, you must fulfill your purpose. My sister, I go back to you. I have not forgotten you. I don't know if you are a believer. Deepen yourself in the things of God. Look for a good support system, people that you can really talk to. Learn to communicate with God through his word. But also, if you don't have such good support system, build one, your husband, your children, if you don't have any, your people that come, family, it's not only people born of the same blood with you. Family. Those people who are there for you in times of need. They are your family. I had the luck. that I had family within people of my own blood. My mother, my daughter, and my husband. Read books. Listen to other people's stories and testimonies, how they dealt with their situations. With time, all I can tell you, my sister, time heals the wound. I know your mom was taken away at a time when none of you prepared for it because nobody prepares for these things. But you will get better every day as the days go by. One important thing I'll advise you, which I say also in my book, but towards the end, is if you know that thing which your mother stood for, the good thing that she stood for, carry that legacy and do it for her. If she stood for honesty, if whatever she stood for that was positive, make sure that you live your life carrying that forward. Every good thing about her so that she'll never be forgotten. So that's the advice I'll give you, my sister. Okay, okay. Stella Amade, thank you, thank you, I appreciate you, thank you so much, all of you. The Lord bless you, and I thank you, I appreciate you, thank you.
God bless you real good, Pastor Nosa. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have another question here. <clears throat> okay. Good evening, woman of God. Thank you very much. Your video was post was sent to my inbox by a very good friend of mine. And when I heard your story, I decided to check who you are. I saw some of your work on YouTube and some on Facebook. I really appreciate you. And I thank God for your life. Ma, I do not really have a question. I just have a message of encouragement to you. A message to to inspire you, to motivate you, just like you said in your video, that your purpose is to motivate and inspire people. I am sending you this month message to encourage you as well. The same way that you are using your life to encourage people, may God also encourage you. May God replenish you and restore back to you that which you have lost in your life. I appreciate you. You are a wonderful person. You are beautiful inside and out. Thank you, Ma. I appreciate you. I hope to meet you one day. Please, below are my contact details. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate you so, 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 so much. Thank you very much for this. Thank you very much for this. I will reach out. I will definitely reach out to you after this program. I appreciate you so much. I will reach out to you after this program. Thank you very much. I want to salute you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that prayer. Thank you for being a voice of encouragement to me. Thank you for uh, wanting to inspire me. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. One thing I have to tell you, my my readers, my fans, my listeners, is that many times I come online and I say I am here to encourage you. But the truth is, you encourage me. The truth is, as I talk to you, I'm not trying to teach you anything. As I talk to you, I learn from you. It is your courage, it is your, your support that makes it possible for me to stand with boldness, to, to, to come with boldness, to say, don't give up. I celebrate you, my friends. I celebrate you, my fans. I, I celebrate you, my readers. I celebrate all of you. Like we said, like I said before, the book is still available on Amazon. It's in two languages. It's in English and it's in Dutch. And our giveaway is still ongoing for uh, the youth in Nigeria. I did appreciate some people in the beginning, those who have contributed to making it a reality that we are giving this book out for free to youth in Nigeria. We have not been able to meet our target. Our target was 100 books in Benin City. 100 books in Benin City. Why Benin City? That's the city where I have my home. I'm not an adult person, but that's where I have my home. That's where I went to school. And I wanted to start from there. So uh, our, our uh, how do you say it? Our representative, Steve from Rakai, we, we appreciate you so much. As soon as we get the videos and the pictures of the uh, students who got the book, or publish them and i want to thank all of you so those of you who still want to support us you can give one book it's okay all you have to do we just give us um a call give us a shout out send me an inbox if you want to give 10 books it's okay you can decide that you want to give to your old school you just 
contact me, we arrange it, we get somebody right there in the new city or any state in Nigeria where you say, okay, this is where I went to school, this is where my school is. I want to send so many copies of this book to inspire people. Why am I doing this for the youth? Because life is hard. Life is hard. We can deceive ourselves. I reject it in Jesus' name. But the truth is life is hard. And if our youth are taught from the beginning to have self-confidence, to, 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 to not to allow little things in life or events, uh, setbacks in life to just cripple them, if they can learn from the beginning, if they can hear my story. If I was a millionaire, what I would do is go to different states and divide this book for free, but I'm not a millionaire. So that's where I need your help. Our target was 100. We haven't reached that target, but thank God, slowly we are doing the best we can to encourage them, to inspire the youth. don't give up what happened to you what is happening to you it's not the end of the world you can still rise again that's what i keep saying and i will keep saying it that's why i'm here a voice of hope a voice of encouragement to you i'm going to take the last question and then that will be it for today but next week we'll be reading from chapter five it's going to get more emotional, but that's why we're here. I thank you once again for allowing me into your living room. Please help me share the video. Help me tag your friends. Help me inbox them this video. It's not for sale, but it's to encourage someone. I'm not making money doing this video, so feel free to share it. Don't think that if you share it, money will come into my pocket. No, you just share the video. It will encourage somebody. I appreciate all of you. So I'll take our final question. And uh, okay, this one is on. Okay. <clears throat> Just one second, one second. Just one second. Okay, it says, yeah, this book, Gemma, I appreciate you. Thank you very much for this book. This book is to be kept and revered in every situation. Cutting among all ages, there are lessons to be learned and of course the powerful existence of God Almighty. It was hard for me to put down the book, but I commenced reading it because the substance was intense. Even after reading it, I go back to certain sessions and marvel in the awesomeness. Truly, he makes all things beautiful in his time. The characters were on point as if they were destined for their roles. One cannot but help one cannot help but feel the book in such a way that there is a social attachment like you were right there from walking the aisle with david to the other bittersweet experience of childbearing this is more than a movie in series the genesis and revelation of the book indicates that ezra and riel are covenant and story covenant and story for one another Ah, sorry for another day they manifest the wonders of god the double tragedy is still a wonder even the mama's exit 
every line in the book means so much. The medical insight in the the medical insight, the cuisine, the psychology, hearts of man, and above all, the invaluable relationship with God cannot be overemphasized. For those who may not get a chance to read this book, you may see or hear it as it goes all over the world. Get ready to laugh, cry, imagine, and find your purpose. This is this person's review. And then the question, haven't been through all this, Ma. how do you get the strength to move on? Haven't been through all this, Ma. How do you get the strength? Where do you get the the energy to move on and do all the things that you are doing what motivates you because you are nothing but a wonder i keep wondering what motivates you well first of all i want to thank you yuri for the the review of the book i appreciate you um for for your good words concerning the book what motivates me what motivates me i think i'm going to repeat myself when i say that my family my motivation now my, my strength my 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 strength the grace of god that con the grace comes from god but my motivation comes from my family because every time it looks like things are not going well i can you know blindly or i can just close my eyes and fall if i didn't think that this place was here i would be if i didn't know if i wasn't sure that that i had this back of this seat i can't just do that because I know I will hit my head against the wall. My family is like this. I, I don't believe I know that they are there. So every time it feels like I am falling, every time I feel weak, every time I feel tired, every time I, I feel like, oh, brrr, it's not, this thing is not working. I can just close my eyes and do that because I know they will always catch me. It sounds strange, but I have God that is there always for me. So repeating that God is there for me is like a cliche. But physically, the one that I see I know that God is there for me. He is my strength. He is my grace. He is everything. Because without him, I won't have the air to breathe or the strength to. But the encouragement from my family is the most amazing motivation that I can have. And that's why every opportunity I get, I don't fail to appreciate them. God has blessed me with good people in my life. My husband, my children. And God has blessed me also with some very good friends. And what drives me is to give to people what I received from my family. My motivation, my drive is to have that ability to give to people what my family has given to me. When I say that, some people think it's money. Some people think it's wealth. No. My family has given me 
unconditional love. They have given me unconditional support. They have given me unconditional energy to wings to fly even when I didn't believe that I could fly. And my drive is to, is to, is to have that ability to give somebody else that thing that my family has given me, that wing to fly, the, the courage in them to say, if she can fly, I can fly. In spite of it all, if she can fly, I can fly. That's what I want to, that's my drive. That's what motivates me. That is my motivation for doing what I'm doing. Am I going to be able to do it for everybody? No. Are there people who are going to say, oh no, it's not, no, of course. But the joy that I get from receiving messages from unknown people, people I have never met, people I will never be able to meet, people I may never meet, that's my drive. That's my motivation. Hearing from one person that you have inspired me because of you. Now, I have a story to tell. I'm sure she she's not watching right now but she's um, she may watch later she's from Zimbabwe when this uh, book came out she reached out to me La I think that you you'll watch later or if you're watching now I don't know I, but I can't see you but I know you will watch because she always watches my video and she always shares my video and uh, she reached out to me, got the link, ordered the book, and sent me her picture. She's from Zimbabwe. And then she told me her own story. And we began to talk. And today, as we speak, she is, if not at the editing point of her own book, the story that I am telling, that's the that's the lady. She's connected, yeah. She's connected. Let me show the picture. Okay. Now, this is the message that she sent me. She said, how are you doing? I'm very well, just running to the gym. I finally found a publisher and publishing company who teaches and helps step by step. The first thing my teacher said was right about an orange. The words that came were so many, and I realized I have to go into detail. Okay. First, that's not the one that I wanted to read. She said... Okay. Ah, okay. Aha, this is it. Good morning, Chimamanda. That's what they say in Nigeria. Woman, you rock. I so love, I so much love your book. I could not put it down. I was crying, laughing, and smiling all the way. I read your book in just a few hours. What a talent you have. I'm very happy for you. I love the romance, the pain, and the resilience. I am originally from Zimbabwe, Victoria Falls. 
Now, the truth, after talking to her, she told me her own story. And today, that place that I read, she said, I have finally found a publisher. See, she's at the brink of publishing her own book. We can't all be writers. But what is it that God has deposited in you? You can do it. Is he writing a song that God has put in you, but you are so scared? You can do it. Is it writing a book? Is it, what is it? Is it becoming, I don't know, going back to school? What is it that God has put in you? You can do it. Don't let the pain, don't let anything drag you back. I appreciate you. I thank you, all of you, for joining me today. I thank you so, so, so much. Prepare your questions for next week, Saturday, 7 o'clock. I'll be right back here again to share my life with you, to share my story with you. Any questions that you feel that you need to ask, feel free to ask. I'm an open book. If I have put it in the book, you might as well hear it from me. Thank you. God bless you. It's been a wonderful Saturday. I have enjoyed being in your living room. And I hope that you have enjoyed having me. Until next week, still remains your very own. Amanda, God bless you.